Hey fellow tennis nerds, this is the Pacific X Tour Pro 97 racket review. As most of you know, I like to buy and sell rackets. That's kind of the reason I started Tennis Nerd many years ago. I've been able to test hundreds of rackets over the years as well as strings. I have tested several of the old Fisher rackets, but once they were bought by Pacific, so Pacific bought the Fisher racket molds and started a new brand and I've never gotten around to trying Pacific. This Pacific X Tour Pro 97 is the first Pacific frame I review. A lot of these frames that they create are based on molds of the old Fisher rackets. Fisher was a high quality manufacturer, really created a, a nice uh, feel in the rackets, more of a player's frame they're famous for and so that seems to be the case also with Pacific. But it's a small manufacturer, I like to put the spotlight sometimes on these smaller brands and manufacturers and their products. There's some quality stuff being released from the smaller brands as well, so that's good for you to keep in mind. It's not only Wilson, Babolat and Head and so on. It's also some really good stuff being created around the world from smaller brands, such as Pacific. So the XTOR Pro 97, it's pretty close to a Pro Staff 97. It's 315 grams unstrung, quite headlight balance. Stiffness is about in the middle. I've seen different stiffness ratings from various different websites. I don't have a machine so I can measure this myself, but I would say the Pacific's own measurement of 64 strung is the one that feels most accurate when I play with it. So it's a 64 strung frame. It's kind of in the middle in the stiffness scale a bit more flexible in feel than the Pro Staff that I mentioned. Uh, has a beam width of 21 to 22 millimeters. I think that's pretty much perfect. The racket is, comes quite fast through the air. And the string pattern is one of my favorites. It's 1620. I think it offers a nice blend of control and spins. A very interesting spec for me, although you know when you haven't tried the, the brand's frames before you don't really know at all what to expect. If we look at the technologies that Pacific brag about in their marketing, they have uh, the construction includes Basalt X, which is basically integrated basalt fibers in the graphite. The idea behind this is to improve feel and stability. And I'm not sure about the stability part of it, but the feel of this racket is very nice in the sweet spot. It's something that stands out a bit with this frame. And I think it's also a kind of a key characteristic from a lot of the old Fisher frames. So it has a really nice small sweet spot, but that you can really feel it. So uh, definitely a player's frame if you enjoy that soft buttery feel when you actually connect with the sweet spot. The Pacific uh, brand also uh, boasts of something called zero tolerance. I've been talking about quality control and the lack of such with other brands, uh, with this kind of made in China uh, issue we have across the manufacturing market. The Pacific brand uh, has a fabrication process that is supposed to give frames with identical weight and balance. So you can actually stock up on rackets without having to match rackets. I haven't really tested the zero tolerance yet. I'm waiting for a couple of more Pacific frames just to see if this really works. But uh, I, it's a great idea. I think it's a, a something, if it really is correct, that a lot of players uh, appreciate and something that other brands also should go after. If this zero tolerance actually is what they say it is, thumbs up from me. Uh, they also have something called a precise grip system. It's a bit weird name, uh, but you can change the grip size. So it comes with a pallet system similar to head but no glue on the pallets, so it's not so messy and difficult to, to change the pallets. Uh, it can be messy and difficult, it's, it's, some people don't think that, but I think it's a bit of a hassle at times with head frames. But these are easy to replace, you can just clip them on, uh, so that's a, a great innovation as well. And I do like, as you might know, these practical innovations instead of, of the more, this is more power, this is more spin. These things are quite tangible and they can each easily be measured and evaluated from the user and the consumer. We've talked about the specs, we've looked at the tech. How does this Pacific X Tour Pro 97 play? Like I said, it has a very noticeable sweet spot. You really feel when you hit the ball in the middle of the racket. The idea is to give you the feedback 
to uh, adjust your stroke. So I think that's very important feedback. So if you hit it in the sweet spot, it's very buttery, kind of like a more muted head pro tour, which is high praise. Outside the sweet spot, in stock form, the racket flutters a bit more, which is the case with most of these rackets that I've tried around the 315 gram unstrung mark. Most of them require a bit of lead tape to play more stable. Might not be much, but 315 grams with a headlight balance will require some lead tape in the hoop. So that's good to keep in mind if you're looking for a player's frame that's 315 grams on strung, you usually uh, benefit from adding a bit of weight up either at 12 o'clock, which will increase the swing weight, or at three and nine, which I prefer, which will increase the twist weight, make it more stable. So what I did with the Pacific X Tour Pro 97 is that I added six grams of lead tape at three and nine, and an overgrip to kind of balance that out. This resulted in the specs coming in at 340 grams and a 32 centimeter balance, which is around six points head light. And the racket played really nice after that. Yeah, I strung it up with Luxelon All the Power at 23 kilos. It played fast, good blend of control and spin. I felt really inspired as it was quite of a fast frame to swing to go for my shots with this racket. And I really noticed how important it is for my game to have a bit of a more headlight balance, which is what I'm used to. I rather prefer having more heft and a headlight balance it kind of fits my game better. This is of course a matter of taste. The pros they play with usually more of a head heavy balance, so more weight in the head because they, they have excellent technique and they can control it. But for me, I like this to have some lead tape in the hoop, have the option uh, from the manufacturer to actually customize it, but then to have that headlight balance uh, from the get-go. So what this ra racket reminded me of is the Technifiber T Fight 315 Limited, the version uh, before the DC version, to, I think it came out in uh, 13. Uh, so I used to play with that, really nice racket, definitely a racket that requires you to add lead tape, but when you do, uh, it has a really nice plush feel, it's kind of a poor man's PT57A, very addictive racket to play with, I think a lot of players like it, and um, this racket really reminds me of that. I also really like this racket on the serve. It comes through fast, uh, which is important when serving, and it gives you enough power for a predictable but a fast paced response. So you can get some pop from the serve, but I still felt like I was always in control and could place my second serve, which is by far much weaker than my first. Secondly, I felt like I could really swing out also on ground strokes, both backhand and forehand, felt really, really connected to the ball. And I think that's maybe the key where with this frame. I really feel a connection to where I hit in the string bed. Uh, on all shots. So that's a really nice review. It's definitely not stable enough in stock form. So if you're afraid of the weight being a bit high for you, I think this is maybe not the racket for you. But if you're open to adding lead tape, I think this could be an excellent frame to test uh, for sure. All in all, really love this frame. I was very surprised. Uh, I've played with this now for a while and um, the sweet spot is small but precise, but simply a very nice racket for attacking players. If I was a defensive baseliner, I would go with a bigger head size, a more forgivable frame. But if you attack the ball, um, this one is, uh, is a top frame and I will be keeping it in my bag for sure. Is it a racket I could switch to? Uh, that's possible. Uh, I do love the Angel K7 Lime that I've used for a while and I will test them now side by side to see which one kind of fits me best. These are two top frames from smaller brands, so keep that in mind that you have to have an open mind about finding your perfect frame and what racket can, can work well for your game because there are so many brands and different racket models, you can't test them all, but keep an open mind also outside the big manufacturers. You might find a really nice racket from a smaller brand, uh, such as Pacific, Angel, Diadem, uh, which is coming up soon. Uh, and so on. So that's it, top frame, really enjoyed it, excellent attacking player's frame, and I hope you really like this review. As always, thanks for all the support. If you support my Patreon page, I will thank you even more through some VIP content and exclusive blogs that I will publish on the Patreon page. So if you have a few dollars to spare every month, I would appreciate if you can put it towards Tennis Nerd 
and um, get some extra VIP content as newsletters and blogs, etc. Also, check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, all the normal channels, as well as tennisnerd.net. Have a nice day, everyone, and I hope you get to play some tennis. Jesus.